Hello, life artists. This is Barbara Drubay, and this is the place where we embody our creativity. Now, I think that the number one killer of our creativity, the number one, is the fact that we're lying all the time. Okay, that's pretty heavy what I just said, but let's break it down. Think about it. Basically, what are we doing? We are absolutely taught since very, 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 very young that to express my desire, to be who I am, to feel what I feel is not okay. Now, I call it being based in shame. We are ultimately, each of us, constantly infused with the sense of I'm not okay, I'm not good enough. And this underlines every action that you are taking in your creativity. And it is the thing that is stopping us. Now, let's break something down for a minute. What is actually shame? Brene Brown, uh, she talks about shame and she's an amazing speaker and writer. She talks about shame as being the sense or the experience that you are ultimately flawed, that something is terribly wrong with you. Okay? Now, it's not that we walk around thinking, oh, something's terribly wrong with me. But how many times when you go to take action, yeah, do you start to think that you need to do something better, extra, more than? Why would you need to be more than something that you are? These are thoughts that something is ultimately not okay with me, so I need to pretend to be much more than I am. Now, this is what I call shame. And if you think about our creativity, shame is ruling us. Now, I said we walk around lying all the time. And the fact is, is you can call it lying or you can call it pretense. Think about it. When I go to just do what I want, to desire what I want, to feel what I feel, what are we told? Yeah, if I'm afraid, I'm told, oh, it's not so frightening. If I'm sad, yeah, I'm told, ah, get over it. It'll pass. If I'm angry, definitely don't express that. If I'm too excited, too excited, yeah, I'm told to quiet down. Basically, we're given a whole bunch of social agreements on what is acceptable. And what I look at is particularly around our power, around our creativity, around our pleasure, joy, around the things that we want, around being direct and clear and going for things, we're told, mm, that's a bit too intense. Don't be so powerful. Don't really desire that. And fundamentally, what you feel is either not what is actually happening, yeah, or it's too much. Now this sensation of being too much, <laughs> when we started growing up as little ones, we got this sensation just because of all kinds of situations in life. What happened is we started to then internalize this message from reality. I'm super excited in school, tone it down. I'm, I'm super angry because I didn't get ice cream. Don't be angry. Of course I'm angry, I wanted something, right? Now, that's just reality. But what happened is we started to internalize that as, wait a minute, I'm really angry, but I'm told not to be angry. So there must be something wrong with me about what I'm feeling. This starts to become internalized shame. And when we start to go out into our lives, eh, how we learn to respond to that shame is to start pretending. <laughs> now think about that for a minute. How many of you guys, when you're going out to a party, yeah, instead of just being who you are, yeah, maybe that night you're a bit quiet. Yeah, you go out to that party, what do you need to be? You need to be outgoing. You start to pretend that. If you're nervous or afraid or insecure, instead of just feeling that, relaxing into it and seeing what happens, we start to pretend to be strong, to be outgoing, to be confident. Now, all of these pretenses, yeah, all of these ways of pretending, start with the belief that something's not okay with 
just the basic, basic expression of who I am in that moment. It's not okay to be sad. It's not okay to be angry. It's not okay to, to be excited. It's not okay to be doing extremely well next to someone who feels sad, right? We have to tone it down. And this is what I mean by pretense. Now this starts with an idea in our head, an idea that I'm too much. My emotions and my desires are too much. And then we start developing strategies to tone it down. And what happens? When we tone down all of that, we become stuck. We start needing to be something other than what I actually am. Now, being something or someone other than I actually am is where most of our creative energy is going. <laughs> Think about that for a minute. Imagine when you're creating the state of I'm confident, even though you're very much not confident at that moment. Yeah? It creates a state in your body which is contracted, tight, uh, something that you're not. All that effort takes a lot of energy. And that effort and energy is, is a lot of effort and energy that you could be putting into actually just feeling what you're feeling and creating what you want to create. Now, when I talk about shame in the creative process, I'm really just looking at one basic thing. If you think about what you're trying to do in your creative process, truly, it's about I want something. It's about really agreeing, first and foremost, I am allowed to desire what I desire. And secondly, how can I return to the basic feelings that I have of anger, of pleasure, of joy, of excitement, of fear, of pain, without needing to pretend that I'm anything different? Now, in the body, what that means is literally creating states where A, I agree it's okay to desire what I want. And B, I interrupt the shame loop, meaning I don't have to hide how I feel. I don't have to be nice when I don't feel nice, okay? I don't have to um, try and please people, fit in, do the right thing. Think about it. The people that we admire, the people that we look at as highly creative, they are not pretending to be anyone else. They are also not holding themselves back. They are also not saying, oh goodness, how do I get that person to like me? I should be somebody else. No, the people that we desire, that, that, that we are excited about, they're themselves, right? That's what we find valuable. That's what we look at and say, wow. Now, how do we do that in our body? By learning literally to feel into the states of being that you actually feel. What does sadness feel like? Contracting in your chest, heaviness, kind of muscly softness, and being that. What does anger feel like? A lot of energy and allowing that to flow. What does my desire feel like in the body? Tuning into our body allows us to actually retune into what's real. Not what we believe should be real but what's actually real. So today we're going to do a training on returning your states of flow back to who you really are, back to what you truly desire, and interrupting this killer of our creativity called shame. So see you in our training. So in today's training, we are going to be tackling states of embodied shame and more particularly, moving that into a state of wanting and desire. We're going to do practices to raise our level of energy and then relax and then move into concentration and relaxation as a confident physical experience. So I want you to just stand for a minute and we're going to stretch. Five movements of stretching. Stretch up onto your tippy toes. Stretch your hands. Bring your hands behind your back. Lean back. 
And up, roll down, breathing out, relax the low back, oh, feel that? Breathe in, roll up, and I want you to rotate your pelvis a couple times to each side, and I want you to swing your arms. Hmm. Now we're going to breathe in, and we're going to roll down while breathing out, and really just let your body breathe out, rolling down, expanding your spine, roll back up, roll down, roll up, breathing in. And now stand, and we're going to take a deep breath in and hold it. Breathe out and relax and be empty at the bottom. Take a deep breath in. One, two, three, four, five. Hold it. Breathe out. Five, two, three, four, five. Hold it. Relax your muscles. Breathe in deeply. And I want you to think about something that you really, really want, but something that you're really ashamed to want fully. And I want you to notice your face. What happened there? How do you mask or hide this sensation of, I really want something? And while you feel this, I really want it, but I'm not so sure that I'm allowed. Feel what your face is doing and just go into that movement and hold the sensation of your face and just hold that. And intensify this facial holding. And then relax and then breathe. And again, we're going to feel this sensation of wanting something. And feel how you make that next face. It can be a smile, it can be a seriousness. Hold that face. Feel the effort that it creates in all your body. And relax it. (sighs) Breathe deeply. And then again, feel, I really want that, but I'm afraid and ashamed. It shouldn't, I'm not supposed to show it. And feel the next face that appears and become that face. And feel what it does. Feel the mask that you create. And then breathe out and relax that face. And then again, think about something you really, really want, but are ashamed about. Feel the shame, I shouldn't show it. And again, feel your face. Be that face. Intensify the contractions there, the way you hold your body. Feel what areas of your face tighten. And feel how your face expresses this state of, I shouldn't want. And now relax it. (sighs) And breathe very full, very deep. Let your body just gently move. Let your face just relax. And now we're going to move our face to this rhythm. And what you're going to do is you're going to move your face in many different ways, contracting and relaxing your face. Tuck, 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 tuck. Open, close your eyes, move your tongue. Find new movements every time you stop. Find the movement in your head. Let 
Put your eyes, your tongue, your nose. Mm -hmm. And keep moving your face. Find new movements, your forehead, your eyes. And relax your face. And feel all those funny movements in your face. And now stand on your right heel and just rotate on it. And feel your heel and relax your body. Relax your face. Breathe at your eyes and feel your right heel. And now onto your left heel and rotate to the left. Let your eyes be defocused. Just move around and relax. Let your shoulders relax. And now stand. And I want you to jump half a circle. And jump half a circle. Change and shift perspectives. Half a circle. Jump three quarters of a circle. Yeah, jump three quarters of a circle. Just feel, it makes our minds. Now jump the other way. Three quarters of a circle. Jump a quarter circle in whatever direction you want. And let it shift your perspective. And now jump forward to the front. Breathe. Now you're gonna bring your hands to your eyes. Breathe out while as if pulling away from your eyes. Breathe in. Let your eyes defocus and relax. Let your head relax and let this movement, ah, your opera. Now bring your hands to your ears and the same thing. Breathe in and breathe out. Allow the space around your head to expand. Listen to the sounds. Relax your legs, your pelvis, your head. And let all this thought about what's right or wrong, what's shameful and what's not okay, just breathe out and expand your head. And relax, take a deep breath. And when you breathe in, bring your hands above your head to your face, cover your face, and just let your hands wash down your face. There you go. Breathe in, hands go up. And now as you go down, gently bend your knees. Now let your hands go to your low belly, and we're going to breathe into our low bellies, opening our arms and bringing them to our diaphragm. Breathing in, breathing out, and bringing the hand to our chest. Breathing up. And breathe out, bring your hand to your belly again. Relax that. Breathe in, hands to the out. Breathe out, your hand comes to your diaphragm. 
Breathe in, it goes to the side and opens. Breathe out, it goes to your heart. Breathe in, your arms go up. Breathe out and return to your belly. Each time relaxing deeper. Breathe in, expand. And let your arms just relax. Take a few deep breaths. <sighs> Feel the sensation of your body. Feel the movements there. And just feel the enjoyment, the quiet. Feel that our bodies are not shameful. Our desires are not shameful. So welcome back. How is it to experience these states after training? Now remember, uh, you can practice to pretend to want and hide your unique gifts, your feelings. Or you can practice the states of self-love, the egotistical excitement of declaring and expressing your wants, your desires, your feelings, allowing you to really cut that shame cycle out of your life and allowing you then ultimately to create from a state of freedom and self-acceptance, okay? You can use this training anytime you want to uh, go through a movement out of shame and into freedom. Or you can train it as a daily practice of creative flow, allowing you to train physical experiences. Your body just loves flow and it knows intimately how to be in flow. So you can practice states of being out of flow or shamed, yeah, pretending. Or you can use this training to shape and train states of desire, expressing your, your wishes and your wants and moving into freedom. So if you like what I'm doing, and I really truly hope you do, please share this with others. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and definitely check out the implementation questions below. There are questions that get you thinking. Uh, you can do them. There are things that I would just simply ask while you're doing them, stay physical. Remember, it's our body that gets us active and moving. So enjoy those questions. If you would like to reach me or comment or, or sign up for any of our workshops, my creative workshops through Conscious Creation, definitely uh, reach out to me over the website. The uh, webpage is below. And I really thank you so much for being with me today. And remember, your experience is truly in your hands. So thank you for joining me and hope you enjoyed it. See you soon.